Good morning. Happy Saturday, everyone. Praise God. He's awaken us again. I pray that your week was um, beneficial, full of joy uh, and victory as you leaned on God for your understanding and you leaned on him to guide you and you chose uh, your courses of action, your decisions uh, based on his word. Um, today's lesson, this week's lesson is on, is titled The Bible on Sexuality. So, um, we've been learning this week what the Bible says about sexuality and about sexual sin and about the purpose of sex. Um, <clears throat> so, um, before we get started, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning feeling blessed and honored to have a relationship with you. You honor us and you bless us with the love that you show us. And we appreciate, Father, all that you've done for us. You've done so much for your creation. You've never turned your back. You've always done what was necessary to provide the leadership for your people. You've led us through countless trials and tribulations in this battle for our souls. You've won the war and you continue to win it. You continue to enforce your will on this world and God we know that we live in we're living in a period of grace where your grace abounds where you have not judged us and that you've you've used your Holy Spirit to call your people to repentance I repent dear God I repent of my wrongdoing and I I'm turning to you and away from my will so that I may not sin against you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for accepting my repentance. Thank you for indwelling me with your spirit that convicts me of the sin that I commit. Thank you, Father, for your word. For your word enlightens my path and helps me to walk straight towards you. And I pray that today's lesson encourages someone to walk towards you too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, today's uh, daily devotional is titled, Guard Against Sensuality. And it's from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 12, and verses 14 through 17. Okay, let's read it. Verse 14 says, Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby may be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. 
for ye know how that afterwards whom or when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears there's some things that you can't reverse in life some decisions Esau uh, made a bad decision and sold his birthright but the Bible says that even though he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears wow he sought repentance. He tried to repent. It wasn't accepted. Sometimes the decision that you make, you can't repent of the consequences. And so we need to be careful. And that's what this verse says. Be careful. Look diligently so that you not fall from grace. Examine yourself. Be careful because there's snares and traps out there. Satan has set to try to steal your soul from God. Okay. So, that's our daily devotional. And we will finish up our lessons for this week with Section 3B, titled, Homosexual Behavior, Not Part of Christ's Likeness. And the references are 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 11, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. And let's start reading at 1 Timothy 1, 9. And it says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any one thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infamous, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay, the commentary says there are those who seek to reinterpret Scripture with the aim of normalizing homosexuality among Christians. However, there is no reading of Scripture that allows us to come to the conclusion any more than there is scripture allowing any other type of sexual sin. 
there are other issues on which the Bible seems less clear on the surface. But a proper reading brings great clarity and new insight. However, there is no such tension for the issue of homosexuality in Scripture. The biblical writers were aware of the practice of homosexuality in their contemporary culture. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, Paul speaks of those who were infamous and abusers of themselves which mankind, which are both references to males who have sex with males. People who like this, along with thieves, materialistics, drunkards, abusers, and all sexually immoral people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Similarly, in writing to Timothy, Paul refers to those who, among other things, defile themselves with mankind as lawless and disobedient. There is not a single passage of scripture that points to a time when homosexuality is normal or acceptable behavior in the kingdom of God. Homosexual behavior is consistently characterized as sinful behavior which must be repented of if one is to follow Jesus Christ. Here we should mention the argument of some that Paul's negative assessment of this behavior is only directed toward heterosexuals who are committing homosexual acts. Put another way, these interpreters would claim these passages do not apply to those who are naturally of a homosexual orientation. But this argument fails because the idea of sexual orientation would have been foreign to the biblical writers, including Paul. Thus, sexual orientation would not have been a factor in Paul's thinking about homosexual behavior. To quote Randall B. Hayes once more on this issue, Paul treats all homosexual activity as evidence of humanity's tragic confusion and alienation from God the Creator. The good news is found in 1 Corinthians 6.11. Here Paul speaks in the past tense concerning the Christians at Corinth. Such were some of you. Jesus Christ had delivered the believers there from all types of sin including homosexual behavior. Okay, we'll end this lesson um, with a section or a paragraph titled God's Clear Plan. It says, it is clear that God intends for human sexual experience to remain within the bounds of marriage between a man and woman. This one flesh union of man and woman was part of the created order before the fall, recorded in Genesis 3. All other sexual behavior, including homosexuality, enters the story only after the fall and is the result of human beings' rebellion against the worship of God. 
but it would be incomplete if this is all that is said about the matter. Whatever we have done, whatever sexual sin and brokenness may have been present in our lives, God's mercy and grace are ready to bring forgiveness, deliverance, and transformation if we will call out to him for salvation. I love this paragraph because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. I don't care who you are. There is none, not one who is righteous or good before God. We exist in a fallen state. This physical body is defective. It is infected with a sin nature. And so we all sin. But because God loves us, no matter who we are and what we've done, we can come to him, admit our sin, repent of it, turn away from it, and ask him to cleanse us deliver us from that sin and transform us. So please understand that nothing you've done is so bad that God won't forgive you. Just seek Him. Thank you for your time. Um, I pray that something that was said encourages you to realize that God deeply, truly loves you and desires to have a relationship with you. He wants you close to him, just like all fathers and mothers want their kids close to them. So take the time and take a chance on God. Go to Him. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you. I guarantee you that if you do that, God will reveal Himself to you personally. That's how much He cares for you. Thank you. Thank you for this day, this opportunity, and thank you for studying the Word of God with me.